Welcome to the Dirt Time Channel. I'm Alan Halcon. I'm Christopher Nergesh. And I'm still Dude McLean. He's very still. Yeah, he's, he's just like in right, one. Drinking never his mind. coffee, smoking his cigar. Yeah. Anyway, he doesn't have a cigar right now. Oh, well, he did have a cigar. He's oh. got it in his pocket. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Christopher's going to talk to us today about yucca. So this is our common yucca that we see all over Southern California and actually all throughout the desert southwest. It's like the hardware store that the Native Americans used in the old days. It's also a food source. Which variation of uh, yucca is well, this? Well, I believe this is the yucca whippoli, which is sometimes called our Lord's Candle and Spanish bayonet. It goes by a lot of names. Uh, you're going to find a lot of variation within the different species because some of them make better fiber. Some of them don't even make good soap. But we're going to show you some of those things today. I think, for the most part, all of the flowers could be eaten. The fruits of some are better tasting than others. This one has a... When it flowers, actually, I know you guys have seen it, it looks like this big pink asparagus. It's like a, yeah, well, when it flowers, like a big giant candlestick sticking out exactly. of this rosette yeah, of, of these leaves. Of, of those leaves at the yeah. bottom. And it's well, kind of pink. Yeah, and the uh, the flowers are, are delicious to eat. They're nice and sweet. You can oh, pick man, them right do you off. remember we just did that thing up in Santa Barbara? Yeah. Man, that was some they of the really best. Good. Wow. Remember when you guys haul, oh, you, I, I, well, you guys hollowed out that yucca. The yucca stock, that's right, for and, water and purification. You, you purified water, and yeah. then we, we boiled some of the yucca flowers in there. I think I have that over in the yard. I should have brought that over. But you can actually hollow out the dried stock. These guys did it in what's in their pocket kind of scenario. Yeah, so, it was. it's it's really an amazing plant. I mean, the, the many uses. I mean, brushes. Brush. This is a style of a Mexican brush that you can still get in markets today. And it's the same, just made the same way that the Native Americans did it by putting wire on this root. So what Alan has in his hand is a, a larger brush that would have been used for cleaning rocks that were used for cooking or cleaning one's home. They're very easy to make. You use it for uh, pots and pans, right? I, I use it for uh, my uh, Dutch ovens and so on. Yeah, it works and, really well. And basically, all this is is the leaves just folded up, folded in half, and you twist them around and. Well, in in, in essence, there's a little right. more to it than that, but basically that's what there's what's involved. So basically, yucca is used for making twine, and the twine can then be used for making nets and rope and sandals and hats and fabric and all sorts in of fact, things. In fact, we used the net with what's in our pocket. It was made from yucca. He yeah. he made the net, and didn't that's the one he lost the fish with? That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, no, I mean you did lose the fish. Right? He did use, the, but What's, he doesn't ever do that on the ocean. Well, because he goes on the ocean a lot. That's yes. what I understand about that. Guys, I you love go, you, to fish. You, I love fishing. That's one of my addictions. I have to say that that's with true. Diet Coke. That, okay, that and Diet <laughs> Coke. This is a length of twine. This is your most basic thing. We'll show you how to do this in just a minute. Look how long this twine is. How come you didn't straighten this up for oh, me? Oh, this dude? is this is amazing. Yeah, and this is some fine twine made of the yucca. Now, here is a sling, so you can see some of the possible uses of having twine. This is a rabbit skin sling, like people would have used in the old days. The, uh, the twine could also be used to make nets, fish nets, um, uh, carrying bags. This I want to show you. This is pretty awesome. This is actually agave, which is a related plant. It's not. It's the large blue leaf, and they, they uh, let the leaves rot and take out the fiber, and then they make this on a loom in Mexico. They also make tequila out of agave. This is true. They make tequila out of I agave, know. too. Yeah, yeah. Because well, I see dude drink it all the time. Is that true, dude? Oh, all the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, agave has a lot of the same uses as yucca. You can actually peel the skin off of the leaf and get a paper, which mm -hmm. is incredibly unique. The problem with it is that when you touch the exposed leaf, you can get a rash like poison oak right away. So I generally Some don't people. bother. Some people. Most people. Some Most people. people. Okay, whatever. The majority. That's, that's of your, you see how just like whatever. Well, that's whatever. that's is that that is that Alan's professional opinion? Hey, hey Christopher. Or what? his civilian opinion? Whatever. Okay. So look at that fabric. People used to wear clothes like this in the old days. And then check this out. This is a sandal, a Schumacher style sandal made by. Uh, you start with a U-shaped uh, bundle of yucca. Sim similar to this. So basically, this is like split in half. Yeah. And then you just you go over and under and over and under, and then you tie it to your ankle and to your foot. So this is one style of footwear made with yucca. This one is actually pretty interesting. This is the Mogollon sandal. You guys know who the Mogollon people are? Yes. The people that made that sandal. <clears throat> Does he get by his whole life this way? Yes. Okay. I don't. All Mog I need is to have you around. The, the Mogollon were one of the extinct uh, groups down in the southwest uh, near Arizona and New Mexico. <clears throat> but in the caves, you find this kind of sandal. It's four leaves. Oh, and there's a, this is actually a really interesting story yeah, yeah. about uh, 
how it was figured out by Paul Campbell. Well, Paul Campbell said that he studied images of these in museums, and he finally figured out how the weave, it's called a plate, P-L-A-I-T. He shows it in his book, Outdoor Sur uh, Survival Skills in right California. I highly recommend that you get a copy and have Paul sign it. Now, um, if you get it on my website, though, I would make money and Paul wouldn't. Well, no, get it from Paul. That's better. That's better. So this is the Moga Young You're always sandal. out trying to make a buck, huh? Trying to. I, it's not Exploiting working. Exploiting everyone. It's not working, though, folks. Okay, so here's Well, the... I wouldn't say that. I mean, you have quite the McMansion over here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now, there's a couple of other uses. I'm going to take a leaf and bend it. This is a, a, a young leaf. And well, well is, talk about that real quick. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of people out there that when they want to process and strip down the fibers, what you're showing right now is a field expedient way to separate the fibers. Right. A lot of people, they'll take a rock, they'll mash it out and separate the fibers as finely as possible. And basically what you did is you took this, work, pinched it between your fingers, and just started just working it up working, and down. Yeah. And that... Now, that causes a separation right in the middle. Right. From and there you start to strip. Then you start shredding it and stripping it. And, and actually, I kind of criticize people who do that because I think it weakens the fiber. And it's my theory is that it helps school teachers keep the children quiet for a while. But, but some people <laughs> claim that there was some historical basis to that. But you don't want to use a rock. You want to use a piece of wood. Is that how they kept you quiet in school? Well, yeah. I never did this in school. They don't, they're not really... He never went to school. Well, no, I they're did go to school, They're scraping it more than they're pounding it. They scrape well, it Well, but off. I've seen the children whacking away. Well, that's the children. Yeah, Paul yeah. Paul does it where he's just scraping it. Yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul does it the proper way. I'm sure the children just are following the instructions of the teachers who just learned about it the day before in many cases. Well, you're actually going to give credit uh, to Paul for doing something proper because you guys always seem to be, be bickering back and forth about we don't obvious bicker. hand stones. You guys bicker. You guys, unless you father and son bicker, but it's like a married <laughs> couple, folks. Paul and I, we may have professional well, well, academic differences. That's professional all. There's no married couple stuff going on here. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> I know, okay. You guys were happy about, uh, well, I won't even go there. Yeah, please don't. Yeah. I have no idea what you're going to say, okay. but if you have to second guess yourself before you say it, it's got to be bad. Okay, so uh, here's a little bundle of twine. I'm going to have Alan, or, or a bundle of fiber. You twist to the right, pull to the left, and we can do a little close-up of this, but twist to the right, pull to the left. The reverse what, you're, friction. You're, you're twisting the, right the individual side, groups. The individual groups. It's in two parts. I'm twisting one outward and pulling it back to the uh, to the other side. Now, we'll demonstrate all this at dirt time. So, so you those twist you to come, the right, and then you reverse wrap to the left everything. Correct. Twist to, Just like your old high school dance. Twist to the right, pull it to the left. You do it twist once. Right, it's, it. it's very redundant. <laughs> High school. Twist That's to, actually really funny. Is it really? Twist to the right, pull it to the left. Well, your dances. I didn't go to those kind of dances. No, uh, the twist, the the twist right. was long after... I graduated. Well, from high you know, you know, you don't have to qualify this, dude. We're doing twining, not dancing, yeah, anyway. Yeah, uh, exactly. We're so, not, dude. No. You just sit there and. Sh so here's a little. Again. Th this is what the goal is to have something fine like this. Now, this doesn't look that great. We did it in a hurry, uh, but it, it still is a very strong fiber. It's the basis. Whoa. Could be the basis for bowstrings, for nets, for fish nets, for all sorts. Well, of things. and one of the other great features of yucca is its ability to make soap. Yeah, it's great. Let I me, mean, here we have... Well, let, here me, we have. let me add one thing before we get to the soap. Uh, your world's tied together. If you're out and you need something tied, a, a, a tent rope breaks or whatever, it disappears with a porcupine somewhere. Uh, porcupine? Yeah, porcupine's like the salt from your hands. Oh, really? And, Did you uh, that? No, I didn't. That's, are you sure? Yes. You've had porcupines lick your hands? I've Do you and your yeah. father discuss these things often? <laughs> well, I'm asking. Have you had porcupines no, lick your hands? No, but they're known for eating the wood on um, on hatchets and stuff because of the salt. And how do you know it's water. because of the salt? Because we know that. Dude is a, Again, have you had a it, porcupine it's an, it's a, lick your hands? It's a naturalist he thing. He should not be questioning you, That's the right. elder. That's right. Okay. Never question anything he I have to say ever. He has vast experience. Not only will I not question it, I don't believe water. it. Whoa, that's unacceptable. That's uncalled for. He has no that idea what he's talking about. He has no idea who he's like dealing that. with. I, you're right, I don't. But I readily admit that. You, on the other hand, would never admit that. What? Only with my water. Oh. Do your just job, Alan. Bit. You can handle that, can't you? Okay, just give me a little water. I can't believe this. It's all that Pepsi going to his brain. Yeah. Come on. Or yeah. Coke. Well, I just want to make sure I don't rub the salt off my hands so I can have a porcupine lick my hands. You tilt. Okay, fine. Tilt. Very good. Oh, man. I can't believe this. Can we get through this without you making well, a comment? If you can do it, fine. Well, hi, then stop. Hi, Paul. Hi, John. Hey, I um. I, can we uh, get through this? I'm trying to do it. Well, I'm then, just, I, this I'm tastes great. Can't do it if somebody's talking. I'm already thinking this about the movie I saw last weekend. Okay, a little bit of water, and you just start working it, folks. Like so. Okay, that's good for the moment. Look at this. 
Look at that soap. Look at that lather. Isn't that awesome? Okay, take off your hat. We're going to no, do the shampoo. Yeah, I don't think so. This so, does make a great shampoo. For the dog, for your clothes. To get the salt your, off the palm of your hand so right. the porcupines don't lick your hand. Or like, you know, I noticed at dirt time, there were a lot of, a lot of porcupines about around dude's tent. That's right. Right. What were they licking, dude? <laughs> uh, they were looking for this, you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think that's all today, folks. <laughs> I'm Alan Hell call Christopher Neergish, Dude McClay. We'll see you next time on DirtTime.com. Check your six. I think we're really over. Yeah. <laughs> okay, look at that leather. Isn't that's that awesome? Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, you know why?